my name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research, and in today's Tinkercad Circuit tutorial, we are going to make a Harry Potter sorting hat. It's going to be a lot of fun, so head on over to tinkercad.com, grab yourself a new circuit, and we will start off with a small breadboard and an Arduino Uno. Now we are going to do one LED for each of the houses, so you can copy these LEDs. We'll need four total. And then we'll also need to change the colors of them. So we can have one red, we need one yellow, and we need one to be green, and we need our last one to be blue. And usually when you just highlight it, you click on it, it highlights in blue, and that pops up this menu over here, and you can choose the color of your LEDs there. All right. We want these all to go into ground and we want them to go through a resistor. So one clever way we can do that is we can actually bring our ground out from the Arduino and into our breadboard. And before we wire it into this rail that we're going to wire all these LEDs into, we could add a resistor in just like that. Okay, so this is still going to be ground, it's just sort of now it's through a resistor which makes it a little bit easier because now I can attach all of these LEDs to ground. Let's move them up one through that resistor. And I don't need four resistors. It's kind of a clever way when you're wiring also to save some of your circuit parts. Now the short leg is the cathode. That's the one that goes into ground. So we're gonna wire each of these short legs into ground for our LEDs. And the long legs is what we're gonna control with our Arduino. So we can pull each of these legs into the Arduino, we can go, let's say, let's start at pin three. And then we'll color this one pink so that we know it goes to the red house. We can do one that is yellow. And we'll put that one into four. And let's just make this a little bit more clear about where our wires are going always good to try to organize your wires so that if anything happens, it's easier to figure out what is going on. All right, we're going to color this one green, and then our last one is going to go into pin six, and that will be blue. The other circuit component we're going to need is a push button, and that's because we want to push the button, and then we'll go through sort of maybe a rainbow of lights and then we'll have it randomly choose what house we go to. So you can pull out a push button, and that push button always goes over this gap, and that just helps that your terminals sort of, I don't know, it sort of helps them stay separate. It's also, I don't think it's quite, in real life, they're not really made in the right size to fit across anywhere but that gap. So I always put it across the gap. It's a nice, easy place to put it. And then we're gonna wire one of these terminals to ground, one of these terminals to hot and then one of the terminals into our Arduino. So we can go ahead and wire this terminal to ground and we can wire this terminal here into our 5 volts which we will color red and that means we also need to actually wire our Arduino 5 volts in there. So right now it doesn't have any power so let's bring this over and make sure that we have power to that button. And then from this button is where we are going to connect it to our Arduino Uno. We could connect it to pin seven, it will work great for us. And we could actually even plug it in right down here because this is terminal 2A and 2B and these terminals are actually connected to each other. So we can color that, let's say, purple. And that is the wiring that we have to do and the rest is going to be in code. So you can come up here in the top right corner and click on the code. And whatever is there in your blocky programming already, we are going to delete that. And then we're all ready to write our new code. All right, so we want something to happen in our circuit if we press this button. So that button is gonna be pretty important. So we can go to control and we can say if and we're going to basically write in here, if the button is pressed, then do something completely amazing. If I want to know when the button's pressed, I have to look for an input. And that input from my button, when I go to my Arduino, is over on pin 7. So I'm going to read digital pin 7. 
and I want to know what's going to happen if it's pressed. Well, if it's pressed, it's going to be high. So over in math, we can bring out this little guy, and you need to say equals. And we can say if we read digital pin 7, and it equals high. And so you can pull the high or low from the bottom of this, of your math stuff. And so if it equals high, then we're going to do something. All right, so now we've decided if we press this button, and the question is what are we going to do when we press this button? So the first thing we'll do when we press this button is we will create a variable, and that will be our house that we go into. All right, and we want to set the house to something, but we want that something to be random. And if we go over into math, we can actually pick a random number and you can plug that in, it's an oval, it plugs in great. We can pick a random number. We only have four houses to choose from, so we want to pick a random number between one and four. All right, and maybe at the very beginning of our code, we set our house number to zero, just to make sure that it always picks a new random number. Every time we run it, it'll clear out what it had. All right, so we're gonna set this, and I think we should do a light show before. It'd be kind of boring if we just press it and it just shows up. I think it'd be fun to sort of cycle through these lights and get people wondering. So let's repeat something, and we'll repeat it maybe five or six times. And let's repeat those lights going on and off. So we can set our pin, and maybe we start here at red, so we set pin three high. And we can wait, and we don't wanna to wait too long, otherwise it can take a really long time to go through this. So maybe we wait just a tenth of a second and then we'll set pin three low. And that will turn three off. And now we wanna do this for pins three, four, five, and six. So what we can do is you can come up and you can duplicate this brick that says set pin three high, wait a tenth of a second and set pin three low. And we can change the pin number to what our yellow one is, which is pin four. So it's gonna go red and then yellow and I can keep repeating this without having to write much code to do the pin that my green LED is on and then also do the pin that my blue LED is on. All right, so that will cycle through like a fun little rainbow and then I'm gonna have to do something to actually choose and show the house that we're doing. So we chose the house with our pick random and we can go into control and we can use an if else statement that will go inside the overall if, but completely underneath that repeat. We can say if that random number, if the house number is equal to one, we'll set the red on. All right, so we can go to math, and we can choose out this one that looks at greater than, less than, or equals to, and if our variable house is equal to one. So let's plug that in, and if that's the case, we're going to set pin three to high and wait and then set pin three to low. So I'm gonna come here actually and duplicate this brick of three and we'll change the pin numbers to three. If I come up here, I'll copy all of that below it and that's gonna be a lot of extra. And let's wait for a little bit longer. So maybe we wait for two seconds, all right? And then we set pin three. Now, if it's not equal to one, let's do something else. And we'll do another if else. In fact, let's throw that away, let's copy this whole if else right here, all right? And now, if it's equal to two, if our random number, our house number is equal to two, let's set this pin to four, all right? And so now then we'll turn yellow on. And let's do that again, because what if we pick three as our random number? And that would be setting pin five to high and low, the third house in our row. Now we don't need another if else at the very end because your only other option is this else and that is gonna be, if it's not one, two, or three, then we're gonna do something. So we can duplicate this little brick of setting pin five high and low and we'll just change that to pin six and we'll set pin six high, wait for a little bit and set it low and then we'll cycle back through all of this. If we close our code, we can start our simulation Nothing happens in the beginning because we wanted to wait until we pressed the button. We pressed our button and it's going through that fun little thing and this time I got the blue house. It goes off and it waits until we press the button again. All right, and each time you will get a random number 
for a random color of house that you are assigned to. So sometimes it might show up more than once, but that is okay because sometimes a random number shows up more than once. So we can just keep going through and you, it's a fun way to do this. And really another interesting thing is if you don't want to have such a big board, you can actually make this with a smaller chip called the AT Tiny, which looks like this. And then if you power your bread bowl, breadboard with a nine volt battery, you could actually have your whole project on this, which is a clever way to make this just a little bit more compact if you wanted to. But this works great for our stuff. And if you want to do that, you can definitely shoot me an email and I will show you how to get your AT Tiny in the board as well. Thank you so much for joining us on this Harry Potter sorting hat. You should check out our paper circuits. We also have a sorting hat on paper circuits where you press in a random spot and see which light lights up and what circuit you made um, connected on that, which is a lot of fun. All right, we'll see you for our other Harry Potter Tinkercad circuit projects and our other Harry Potter Tinkercad code blocks projects as we make some 3D printing stuff. Thanks so much, friends. Have a great one.